Praise the Lord, everybody. I hope you all are here. Uh, let's Good morning, good morning. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. I think we lost quite a few in the transition, but the uh, file was split and broken, broadcast broken. I was trying to get it prepared, but um, it stopped right at the message. And so uh, I'm here, still have the message, and uh, we're going to go live with the message. But thank you for sharing with us this morning in our broadcast. Our Christmas broadcast. Merry Christmas, everybody. Pray you all had a blessed day on yesterday celebrating Christ, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and having time spent with family, loved ones, and having an opportunity to share that joy with one another. This is a season of joy. I want to be an encouragement to everybody. Oftentimes, this season is full of discouragement and depression and disease, and so we want to be joyful and rejoice and encourage even those who are near and dear uh, who might be struggling with this particular time of season but I'm just waiting for those to tune back in log back on to jump off one jump on to another Merry Christmas I'm not sure if y'all can still comment as we go I see some comment there we go okay praise the Lord thank you Jesus so we were at Matthew chapter 2 Matthew chapter 2 and give a few minutes for folks to try to figure it out um, those of you who have connection with other individuals, send the message out. We are on live on our Facebook page. Those who are looking for it on YouTube, it is not there. Um, it stopped just as it did here in Facebook, but I'm not able to broadcast this live feed to YouTube. So we're just right here directly on FaceTime, uh, excuse me, Facebook. Coming straight to you from North Carolina, praise the Lord, where it is reaching almost 70 degrees today. Praise God. All right, just give it a few more minutes. Y'all have Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. There we go. Matthew chapter 2. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Thank you all for coming in again. Uh, apologies. I get technical difficulties. Can't do nothing when uh, the computer wants to do its own thing. And so we're grateful that we had a good start of the service. Our uh, youth and teens led us in a phenomenal way in their uniqueness of starting us off on this Christmas, this special Christmas service. And so we thank God for them. All of the participants, we thank God for them. All right, Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, I want to be reading from the New King James translation. The New King James translation. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 1. Therein you'll find these words, and if you don't mind, share it. Go ahead and share it, share it, share this service. I greatly appreciate it. Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, New King James translation reads thusly. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the 
king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes, the peoples together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from the time from them what time the star appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young man, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come to worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Praise God. Thus concludes the reading of God's holy word. Now after Jesus, was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. All right, for the moment that is mine, I want to preach, teach, have conversation with you all from this phrase as we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christmas season. Happy birthday, Jesus. I want to preach, teach from that text I read and you're hearing from this phrase, why they call them wise. Why they call them wise. <clears throat> Our Father and our God, we thank you yet again for this privileged opportunity to gather over the internet, over the airways. God, thank you so much, regardless of the technical issues we experience every now and again. We thank you, God, that this is not going to be a regularity, but most importantly, God, what overshines and overshadows and even reigns supreme is the simple fact that you're God, you're ultimately in charge, and you still give us a beautiful day. You still give us another opportunity to enjoy life. You give us grace and mercy, your unmerited favor. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to do what you've accomplished through your salvific purpose. And now, God, I'm asking for the presence of your spirit that would not only rest, uh, rule, and abide on me, but that would touch each and every viewer who is sharing with us on today. And that, God, we will receive your word that we hear directly from you, that you will be glorified and the devil would be horr horrified. We thank you. Save someone today. Heal someone today and deliver some way, someone today. All in the matchless, mighty, majestic name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. And we all said. Amen. 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 Why they call them wise. Beloved, today's Samonic Spotlight shines on a group of individuals that most of us have heard something about, but we know little about. We've heard this term, we've heard about and read about, and we've been taught in Sunday school here and there about the wise men. In fact, these wise men make a cameo appearance here in the text I read and you're hearing in Matthew's Gospel chapter 2 within those first 12 verses after these 12 verses these men literally fall off the biblical map and we never hear from them again in scripture there's so many misnomers surrounding these men where they came from who they really are and what their purpose and their functions are growing up as a child and even as an adult i always thought there were three wise men see some of y'all did too there's no indication as to how many wise men, but for some reason or another, we automatically assume there were only three. Where, where do these men come from? Rumor has it that these men were kings or priests. Some thought that they were astrologers or magicians. Some thought that they were scientists. But the question yet remains, who are these men? Where did these men come from and what makes them wise? 
That, that's what my, my reading version calls them. The new, the new King James Version specifically calls them wise. The Bible in the New International Translation refers to them as magi. The Magi, or wise men, were descendants of the old ancient tribe of the Medes. The Medes, the M-E-D-E-S. The Medes are a very popular part of the Persian culture. For those of you who are biblical historians, you are familiar with the Persians. The Medes were a part of the Persian, Persian culture. They were a very important part of, of their culture. In fact, the Medes played the same role in the Persian culture as the Levites played in the Israelite culture. The, the Levites served in this priestly lineage or as part of the priests and so as were the Medes for the Persians. These men were holy men. These men were scholars. Most times they served as advisors to kings and princes and some, sometimes like Daniel and David, they served as interpreters of, of dreams, Daniel rather and Joseph. Uh, nevertheless, in a nutshell, these magi or wise men were individuals that were very knowledgeable. They were holy men of God. They had an insatiable desire to learn more about God and in their pursuit to learn more about God, they studied the stars. It, it is their belief that these magi, that the stars governed a person's destiny. They believe that depending on what star a person was born under, that star literally shaped that person's destiny. Th these magis were so in tune and in touch with the stars that they believe that the stars represented an unwavering, unaltered pattern in the universe. They believe that the same stars and the same patterns of the universe were the same patterns and stars at the very beginning of creation in time and even during their time. And so therefore, if there was ever a deviation or an uh, alteration of the star's patterns, they believed that God was up to something. They believed that if the stars that were shining brighter than any other stars, or if there was any other type of disturbance in the atmosphere uh, as it was related to the stars, it was a clue or a signal to their minds that maybe God was up to something. It is this, this characteristic of the Magi or the wise men that I believe caused their first trait to be considered wise men. They were wise men or considered to be wise men because they recognize God's star. Yeah, they recognize God's star. What, what made them wise men is that they had the ability to recognize God's star. Look at the text. The Bible says in verse 1 and 2, Now after Jesus uh, was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. Did you see that? His star. They recognize God's star. It, it is interesting to me when you, you look at verse 2 because you can't just overlook that and just read right by it. The Bible says that these men in the east in Persia, they looked up and they saw a star and they recognized that this was God's star. They, they traveled from the east to the west in Bethlehem, Judah. When, when they, Judea, when they, when they got, get to this particular place, they asked the question, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Look, looking at the grammatical structure of the text, preachers, it suggests that the only individuals that saw the star were the wise men or the magi, which bothers me, y'all, because the same star that was seen in Persia should have been the same star that was seen in Palestine. For, for instance, if you saw a full moon downtown Richmond, Virginia, it, it should be the same moon you see old, from Old Town Alexandria. The, the same star shown in Washington, D.C. ought to be the same star shown from Baltimore, Maryland. The, the Bible says that these magi looked up and they saw the star. They focused on that star, which is significant because if they were the only ones that recognized the star, then to me it suggests that they were the only ones looking up. Now, now God, God did not design stars to be segregated, separated, or set apart specifically for these men alone. But these men were the only men that looked, or rather took enough time out to look up and to recognize that star. Can, can I just say this to somebody really quickly who's trying to keep up with all these different services that are happening from here to there? If you really want to be blessed, you've got to take time out to look up. 
These men had their eyes on an upward plane. To me, it speaks to the fact that they recognize where their help comes from. Uh, I think David declared it like this, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help come from. Where's my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Look at these men. They were wise because they recognize God's star. They recognize God's star because they focused on God's star. They focused on the stars because they refused to let anything cause them to drop their heads. God help me. They refused to let anything to cause their heads to drop down. They refused to let anything to cause them to take their focus off of a of an upward plane. Can, can I pause right here to encourage somebody who's hanging out here today? Regardless of what you might have been dealing with during this Christmas season, do not let anything or anybody cause you to drop your head. Lift up your head. You ought to post that to somebody. Keep your head up. Yeah, I, I believe the holding up of your head, uh, if you don't have that in the, and your head is down all the time, you'll find yourself in a downward disposition. If you start to look down, you begin to walk down. If you begin to walk down, you'll start to act down. If you start to act down, you'll start to think down. And when you start to think down, you begin to lie down. Help me, Jesus. So the challenge for all of us this season, this holiday season, is to let nothing cause us to hang out our heads down. Why? Because we've all got something to look up for. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I got a reason to lift up my head. They, they recognize God's star because they focused on God's star. Not only were they focused on God's star, but the Bible suggests in verse two that they were also familiar. Somebody typed familiar. They were focused and they were familiar. Verse two says that they said, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Watch this. For, for we have seen not our star, not Herod's star, but we, we have seen not Caesar's star, but we've seen his star. Star. Note that the text suggests that the star that was shining brighter than any of the other stars had to be the star of Jesus Christ. They, they recognized that as powerful as Caesar was, he didn't have a star. As they recognized that as important as Herod was, he didn't have a star. Um, as significant as Augustus was, he didn't have a star. But look at the text, y'all. They said, we looked up and we saw his star. They, they didn't just see the star, but they knew who the star was. Preach PC. I'm trying out here in this balcony, in this beautiful scenery in front of me. The, they recognized that the star was not human, but the star was divine. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I talk right here? One, one of the problems in the church y'all today is that we forget who the star of the service really is. And I believe at times we've gotten off page as a result of a contemporary secular society that causes us to make superstars out of servants. Mm. But these wise men were wise because they recognized who the star of the show really was. Now, I I've watched enough TV and enough movies to recognize that the stars always get their names up in lights. The stars always get their names on the marquees. The stars' names are always larger than everybody else's name. That's why nobody else can be my star except Jesus, because nobody else can get more praise out of me than Jesus. Nobody else can get more joy out of my lips than Jesus, because what? He's my star. The pastor is not the star. The associates are not the stars. The diagonates are not the stars. The singers are not the stars. The lead worshiper is not the star. Jesus Christ, superstar, he's the only one who's the star. And when I come to worship, I come to see the star. I didn't come to see all the other characters. I didn't come log in to see the supporting cast. When I woke up this morning, I woke up with my mind stayed on him. Therefore, I come to see Jesus. I come to see the star. They were familiar with the star. Look, look, look at what they said. We, 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 they said, we, we have seen his star. They were familiar because they knew it was his star. I, I hate to say this, but it's true. I'm afraid that we're raising up a generation of people that's not familiar with the star. I, I'm afraid that the next generation that we're raising up is a bunch of social churchgoers who are not familiar with the star. Our foreparents couldn't talk Hebrew or Greek. They couldn't exegete a text, but guess what? They knew who the star was. They didn't know anything about hermeneutics 
hermeneutics or homiletics, but they, they didn't know anything about systematic theology. But one thing they did know, God help me, they knew who the star was. They, they said, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I've been walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus because they knew who the star was. You ought to post this. Do you know who the star is? Mm. Who, who's the star of your life? Who gets the headlines in your life? Who do you talk about the most? Who do you think about the most? Who do you wake up or rather who woke you up this morning? Who, who, who do you know that started you on your way? My sisters and my brothers, it was the star. And because it was the star, you've got to be familiar with the star. We, we come to cyber sanctuary or we come to church and we get disappointed when our favorite personality doesn't show up. Help me, Jesus. We, we get all upset when the person that we want to preach doesn't preach. We get all upset when the person we want to sing the solos or sing the songs or play doesn't play our songs or sing our songs. When that person doesn't lead the choir, the devil is a liar. The pastor isn't the, the star. The choir isn't the star. The associates aren't the stars. My God, help me. The musicians are aren't the star, but as long as somebody is up in here representing who the star of the service really is, men, women, boys, girls, even a mule can preach. I don't care as long as they're talking about the star. <laughs> they, they were focused on the star. They were familiar with the star. And, and they said, we have seen his star. I'm familiar with that star. I'm focused on that star. But you know what the text also says they were? They, they, they weren't only focused and familiar, but look at what else they did. They followed that star. Look at it. The Bible says, where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star um, and we have come to the west to worship him. We have seen his star in the east have come to worship him. Okay, we are focused on the star. We are familiar with the star. And then they follow the star. Now, how do you know uh, if you're following the right star? Ah, uh, now you you all know how many how many stars are up in the air. In fact, last night was nice, nice, nice clear skies in the evening. You can see all oh, tons of stars, thousands of stars, hundred thousands of stars. They, they looked up and they picked one particular star. And the text says these men, these wise men, these magi, followed that star. And my question of the text is, how did they know that they were following the right star? Preachers, y'all got to help me. I, I think that's a very relevant question of the text because some of us are following star-like people and you need to know the characteristics of a person that's leading you in the right direction. Oh, help me. The text suggests in verse 9 and 10 that these men follow the, 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 they follow the right star because the star led them to the house where Jesus was. Oh my gosh. Uh, you, you know if you have the right star, if the star is leading you closer to Jesus Christ. If you have somebody in your life and that person, place, or thing is not leading you closer to Christ, my sister girl, brother man, you are following the wrong star. Sister, I don't care how bright he may be. Brother, I don't care how much she shines. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. The devil is a liar. If you are not leading me closer to Christ, I might be following the wrong star. You ought to post that. Check your star. Ah, so some of y'all are star struck and because we're star struck, we're following the wrong things. We are following the wrong person, but I want to follow the star that brings me closer to holiness. I want to follow the star that brings me closer to Christ. I, I, I can hear somebody saying, I've been, I've been away too long. I, I, I drifted off all by myself. I don't need anybody to help me be bad all by myself. I don't need anybody to try to help me make myself fall. I can fall all by myself. What I do need is somebody who can bring me closer to Jesus Christ. They recognize God's star. These men were wise men because they had the ability to recognize God and God's creation. Therefore, they recognize God's star. But wait a minute. There's more, y'all. I hope y'all got time. Thank you. The Bible says when they finally made it to Bethlehem, Judah, they, 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 the verse 9, when, when they heard the king, um, they departed. And behold, the star which had been seen in the east went before them till it came and stood. Uh, king James Version says it hovered over the place where the young child was. Well, uh, these men were wise men not only because they recognized God's star, but they were also willing to reverence God's son. These men were wise men because they knew how to come to church and have church. 
<laughs> in verse 9, uh, it says, when they left the king, they saw the star hovering. It stood over the house where baby Jesus was. The star came and stood, hovered over where the baby was. The Bible suggests that at this particular time, the wise men, the magi, are not in the house. They are on the outside of the house. They left King Herod. They've made their way to the house. The star stood over the house, and they're on the outside of the house. They, they did not enter the house until verse 11. You see that? But in verse 10, it says, when they saw the star over the house, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. They got excited with an uncontrollable type of joy. They got excited before they got into the house. They did not come in the house until verse 11, but they got excited in verse 10. That they are not excited because of what's in the house, they're excited about what's over the house. Before they came in the house, they were prepared to enter the house. They did not wait to get in the house, no. They were ready outside of the house before they entered the house. Okay, they, they did not get excited when they were about to get back into church. They, they got excited when they made it to church online. They didn't get excited uh, just because they heard that they were going to be entering the building possibly in 30 days. No, they got excited because the service came back on Facebook and YouTube uh, at whatever time it came on. They weren't excited at the simple fact that it didn't come on at 10. They, they didn't get excited because it didn't come on at uh, 1030. No, they got excited that it was Sunday. Oh, Jesus. They, they didn't get excited when they got in the house. They got excited with exceedingly great joy because they saw a star hovering over the house from the outside. Watch this. Some of us always miss out on real worship because we don't know what time worship starts. <laughs> See, most of us think worship starts at 10 a.m. No, boo-boo, I'm sorry. The worship service starts when your alarm goes off. The worship service starts when, when we get your devices together to find out how we're going to log on to get to church or when you pull up the church, when you pull up in the parking lot. Something on the inside of you ought to be excited even before you roll over in bed, before you cut on your smart TV, before you find your favorite chair to sit in, before the singers start singing, before the preachers start preaching. You ought to be excited, not just based on what's in the house, but what's over the house. Why? Because the same joy that's over the house is the same joy that's over your house. God. They were prepared to worship. Here's my question for you today. Are you prepared? Uh, when, when they get to the house, the star was just hovering. It stood there. That's why I believe y'all. David said, uh, when they said unto me, let us go to the house. He was excited before he got to the house. Uh, my Monday was rough. My Tuesday was a mess. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday was all jacked up. But oh, come Sunday, I've got joy because I'm going to Shiloh Cyber Sanctuary where the star is hovering. Bible says in verse 11, they came to the house. They see a newborn with his mother, Mary, and they fell down in worship. Not, not only were they prepared for service, Watch this. But when they came in the house, they prostrated themselves. They, they laid and fell down on their face and worshiped him. Jesus, y'all, is an arm baby. He, he's sitting in Mary's lap. He, he, he's, and while they walk into the house, their first reaction is to fall prostrate and worship, prostrate themselves. They, they, they fall down, the text says, and they begin to worship him. It is as if they suggest or saying, Lord, we aren't worthy to be in your presence. You, you are sitting in your mother's lap. Therefore, we've got to get lower than you. We can't stand over top of you and your majesty because we're not worthy. Herod should have and could have profiled us and arrested us and locked us away without bail. Uh, but, but we're here. And since we're here, we might as well worship you. What am I trying to say? Well, every time we come into the presence of God, when we come into the house, when we log in for worship, we ought to humble ourselves and recognize we should have been dead a long time ago. We ought to recognize that we should have been gone a long time ago and that we are not worthy. Uh, but the Bible says they worshiped him. It is as if they overlooked married and worshiped him. It is as if they walked right in past Joseph and worshiped him. Every now and again, y'all, when you come to worship, you got to learn how to overlook some folk. 
breach cheeks. I'm trying. Good, good to see you, but, but I didn't come to see you. I came to see him. I, I didn't come to praise you. I came to praise my Savior. I, I didn't come to stroke your ego or your esteem. If I got to overlook your distractions, if I got to overlook your gum chewing, if I got to overlook your getting on my nerves, absolutely with nothing to do with the service, but you keep talking to me and don't even want to grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Stop talking to me during the sermon. I'm here because because I came to be about Jesus. I need to see the Lord. Is there anybody here today who knows that you came here to see Jesus? You came here to hear a word from Jesus, regardless if the service split right in the center and picked up somewhere else. You came to be in his presence. And if you got to overlook some people, overlook some folk who mean you no good, tell yourself, self, I didn't come to see them. I came to see Jesus. But wait, 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 wait. When, when they finished worshiping him, verse 11 says they opened up their treasures and they presented him with gifts. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay, uh, they get to church. They, they, they come in the house. After worshiping him, they open up their treasures and they present their gifts to him. Isn't it interesting that when they came in the house of the Lord or came in the Lord's presence, that they did not come to get, they came to give. Hmm. Isn't it interesting that when they walked into the house as a part of their worship, uh, their worship included giving? Wow. No, nowhere in the text does it suggest that they came to get something. Oh, my. Which means, y'all, real worship means you come, when you come before him, you come before him prepared to give. Preach cheeks. Worship at its best is not reciprocal which means you are only giving just to get but you are giving only to god when, when they came in his presence they opened up their treasures and they began to give here's my question i don't know who's prepared to answer it but what did you come today prepared to give god most of us came to get something. I came to get my praise on. I came to get a word. I came to get a wife. I came to get a husband. The devil is a liar. Did anybody just, did anybody come just to give him what he deserves? Did anybody come just to say, Lord, I want to give you glory for bringing me from the first month to the last month and the last Sunday of the year of a pandemic? Yes. God help me that, that if you, if you never give me anything else, if you never bless me again, if you never raise me up again, if you never protect me again, if you never provide for me again, I didn't come to get today. I just want to come and say thank you. I just want to come and glorify you. I just want to come and praise your holy name because you've been just that good to me. As I close, y'all, um, I also thought it was particularly interesting to look at what they gave. Can we talk about it real quick? The text says in verse 11 that they gave gold, they gave frankincense, they gave myrrh. I thought it was interesting what they gave this baby. Here is this baby and these wise men traveling from Persia to Palestine, and they bring gold, frankincense, and myrrh. From Persia to Palestine, it's a baby. What does a baby need with frankincense and gold what does a baby need with myrrh? Um, it seems like these wise men are bringing unwise gifts. Why would these wise men bring unintelligent, ignorant gifts? It's a baby. Th these wise men traveled across country a great distance from Persia to Palestine, being led by a star, came into the house. When they get in the house, they worship him, and then they open up their gifts to give to him. Out of their treasures, they give to him, and out of all that they could give, they give, the Bible says, they didn't give to Mary, they gave it to Joseph. They give Jesus gifts that, a, that baby Jesus couldn't even use. Can we talk for a second? If you want to bless a baby, buy some pampers. If you want to bless a baby, buy some diapers or some Similac or some Infamil or buy a teething ring. Help us, Lord God. Buy something that the baby can use. But they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Holy Spirit had to explain this to me because I didn't get it. Um, he had explained to me that, that, that about these gifts to Jesus was not based on anything that Jesus needed. These gifts to him were based on what they thought Jesus would play in their lives.
Wow. Because they looked at him as king, they gave him gold. Because they looked at him as priest, they gave him incense. Because they looked at him as a sacrificial lamb that would die on their behalf, they gave him myrrh. Uh, in other words, they gave him a gift that spoke of how much he meant to them. You see, if you really loved him, you, uh, you give him something that represents your love for him. If he hasn't done nothing for you, then that, that, that means you don't have anything to give to him. Therefore, if he doesn't do anything or hasn't done anything for you, then you have nothing to give him. You have nothing to give him. But if he means a lot to you and has done a lot to you, then you give him a lot. <laughs> uh, um, it, it used to bother me, y'all. Uh, we first came to church. It used to bother me, y'all, when we first came. I uh, was sitting in church, and their folk would come in and join in the worship, and they would just sit as if they were waiting for something special to happen, like uh, like if the ceiling would open up and and angels would be ascending and descending and come and singing uh, as our choir. But it, it used to bother me when folk would just sit there and never participate in worship and praise. Uh, it used to bother me when folk would sit and look at me like they were sucking on a lemon or like I was supposed to do some type of magic trick to get them up off their seats. But but God delivered me from that. Thank you, Jesus. God delivered me. Now, y'all, I don't care less how you come. I'm just glad you showed up. <laughs> I'm just glad folk showed up. Praise the Lord. God delivered me, y'all, because now I understand that our worship is predicated on how we worth worship of him. Well. If he doesn't mean much to us, then we don't come prepared to give much. If he hasn't done much for us, we don't turn around and celebrate him much. But for those of us that know that God has sure enough hooked us up, for those of us who know that God looked beyond our faults and blessed us anyway, for those of us who know that God sure enough has given us favor, when we come to worship, we come to give God our best. And if I got to wake the house up that sleeps in on Sundays, if I got to shout the tracks, your little lace front that you just got dead during the week, if you got to shout your wig off your head, if you got to run around your house and act like a fool and scare your neighbors, then you ought to come and give God the praise he deserves. God, call me what you want to call me. Yes, I've earned my degrees, but I will get indignant in my praise because you don't. Bless the Lord our God. Is there anybody watching today that made up in your mind that he's been too good to you for you to just sit there like a bump on a log? He's been too good to you for you not to stand up right there in your kitchen or your living room. He's been too good to you for you not to wave your hand and give God some praise. You've got to bless the Lord. I'm sorry, I, I did say I was done, but wait one minute, it's not over yet. In verse 11, it says, when they came into the house, they saw the young baby with his mother Mary sitting in the lap. They fell down and worshiped him. <clears throat> they gave him gifts that spoke of who he was. Gold, as he's royal. Incense, because he's the priest. Myrrh, because he would be the sacrificial lamb, and that was the embalming fluid utilized to preserve the bodies. And so here in verse 10 says, then they were divine, 12, verse 12 says, they were divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed to their own country another way. Ah, please note, as the text suggests, these men were wise. Wise men because, number one, they recognized God's star. Number two, they reverenced God's son. And number three, they received God's signal. Ah, in verse 12, they were warned. God gave them a revelation. God spoke to them. I praise God that God will give us a word. Not Mary, not through Joseph. It came straight from God. Look at the word God gave. Don't go back to Herod. Now, y'all remember in verse 7 that Herod instructed them. They said, when you go, come back at once. When you find them, you come back and tell me so I can go worship. But God said, don't you go back. Why? Because his worship ain't real. Everybody who says that they want to worship, their worship ain't real. Just because you look like a worshiper, just because you dress like a worshiper, just because you sit like a worshiper, or just because you do antics or make things and gestures like a worshiper doesn't mean you're a worshiper. Because worship means more than just clapping your hands. Worship means more than just shouting hallelujah. Worship is born out of an intimate relationship with God. Don't go back 
to Herod because his worship ain't real. But, but when you go, go another way. Ah, when, when you leave today, take another route. <laughs> In other words, when you go back, don't go back the same. <laughs> Can I close right here? You, you, you've traveled all this way from Persia to Palestine. You, you followed the star wherever it led you. You, you were willing to follow. You, you went through all of that trouble. You, you, you watched the star. You, you saw the star. You followed the star until it stood over the place where the baby was and it hovered over the house. Before you went into the house, you prepared yourself before entering his gates with thanksgiving, before coming into his courts with praise. You went into the house and had worship. You, you presented him with substance in your worship. You, you got your praise in your worship on, even though we're in our homes, you're you're still praising and worshiping in your comments or your post and and even while while sitting there watching the TV or watching this broadcast and the last thing God says I need you to do you, you did all of that you, you you traveled a great distance you 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 followed the star you found the star you came in and worship and gave him what you prepared to give here's the last thing I need you to do don't go back home the same way you came <laughs> you mean to tell me that after everything you went through to get to this service this Sunday morning, that you would let the devil to cause you to leave here the same? Ah, let me talk to those who just logged in right here. Somebody caught hell all week. Somebody just caught hell trying to make it online today, trying to find a signal, trying to find the Facebook page, trying to get on on YouTube. My Kindle's not connecting to fire. Stop burning. Trying to get a quiet place to watch. Trying to get the children to quiet down. Trying to settle down. Trying to get the service uploaded. Trying not to lose your mind to keep the church running. Trying to not fold at the enormity of stress weighing on your shoulders. You mean to tell me you went through all of that, all of this worship, all of this singing, all of this preaching and praying, and you mean to tell me you want to go on about your day depressed, despondent, and in despair? The devil is a liar. You've got to make up in your mind that whenever you leave the presence of the Lord that you are not leaving the same. These men did not go back the way they came, and I don't know who this is for, but you've got Got to make up in your mind that you are not going to leave. You know how you came, but you will not, you will leave different. When I leave service today, I'm going to leave a different way because God has been so good to me. He's been so good that I cannot leave the same way I came. I don't know how I came, or rather, you don't know how I came, but I know I'm going to leave a different way. You got in God's presence, but now leave a different way. You came with a nasty attitude but leave in a different way you came with sadness but leave in a different way you came wondering will you have any gifts underneath the tree with your name on it but when you get from there leave realizing you've got the best gift that you could ever have that's the gift of Jesus Christ somebody ought to say that and post that I've got the best gift gift. Oh, I've got the best gift. I, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I've got the best gift that money can't buy. Thank you, God. I'm going to say it again. I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I've got the best gift that money cannot buy. Is anybody glad that God gave you Jesus? Can somebody say, thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you, God for Jesus. Thank you, God, for Jesus Christ. I I'm finishing this year a different way. I I'm going to worship in the new year a different way. I I'm going to serve a different way. I'm going to live. I'm going to lead. I'm going to love a different way. And check this, church, Shallow Nation. It might cost more time. It might cost a little more money. But I guarantee you what? I'm not going back the way I came. <laughs> Go another way. You might as well call, call me wise too. Y'all tell y'all family that. You might as well call me wise too because I recognize God's star. I reverence God's son and I receive God's signal. Don't go back the same way. Amen. This Christmas, y'all, I know Christmas was yesterday, but we're still in the season of joy. You gotta stay focused on Jesus 
become more familiar with who the Lord Jesus Christ is and keep following Jesus Christ because he is the reason for the season. That's why they called them wise. And that's why I call you wise too, because you're focused, because you're familiar, and because you follow the star. God bless y'all. Let's prepare. This is the fourth Sunday. I don't even have my elements, but I'm going to act like I have them um, because we did it on the, on the recording as I was in the church at the pulpit with my communion elements. But I'm going to give you a second. Go grab your communion. This is the fourth Sunday uh, that we have communion service and how appropriate to do it on this Christmas celebration. And so we thank God for that. I'm going to ask him to bless whatever it is that you have. If you have symbols of God's body and his shed blood, we ask God. God's blessings even now, Father. We thank you for every opportunity you've given us to gather around your table. Thank you for access to you. Thank you for every opportunity you give us to commune with you and with one another. I pray, God, your presence being felt not only just through the entire service, but even in this communion service as we partake of these elements. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name we pray. And we all say, Amen. 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 We got some praise, God. Thank you. Give me some, some light bread. A slice of light bread. Hallelujah. God, thank you as we prepare for that. I pray y'all had a great day on yesterday celebrating the Lord our God. I pray you get together at some point with your families and have prayer and just acknowledge God and thank him for what he has done. Even take time to talk about to the little ones what the tree is, is, is really represents. Many of us don't even know why we have trees in our homes and decorate trees. It's a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. His life lived and died, risen from the grave. And we adorn that tree as a symbol of Christ. And the star represents him and his light shone on us. A light that cannot be hidden. A light that shines so bright and shines within each and every one of us. And the gifts under the tree, the gifts, Lord, that is symbolizes God giving us the greatest gift we could ever receive, the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't go to the tree to get. We go to the tree to give right we got to bless somebody in this christmas season that's what it's about it's about blessing somebody not about making your list and checking it twice but making or making sure everybody gets everything on your list but blessing somebody else and, and and getting something on their list as well praise god um all right oh awesome um we will have our elements are in route by the missus amen praise the lord thank you uh, no thank you thank you we appreciate it. we participate we will participate hallelujah all right thanks on, on the night the Lord was betrayed, tell you the light bread. On the night the Lord was betrayed, he broke bread. He gave thanks. He said, this is my body broken from you. Let's eat and do this in remembrance of them. Amen. In the like same manner, he took the cup after they supped. He said, this is my blood, the new covenant, the new testament in my blood. Drink this and do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink as they did on that night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Had a song queued up in the original editing of the video. I'm not singing today. Sorry. Um, but praise the Lord. We thank God. Thank you all for tuning in and hanging out and sticking with us. Uh, despite our technical difficulties, we'll go, we're going to get it together. What we're really praying for is to get back into the building. So we rebuke uh, Omicron. We rebuke the Delta variants and we rebuke um, coronavirus. Any type of sickness, illness, or disease that keeps us from gathering together, particularly with our loved ones and then with our extended family by way of our church. God bless you, Shallow Nation. Thank you for hanging out. Again, Merry Christmas from the Cheekses, from the Mathises, uh, from the Samuels, from all of our families, the Williams, praise the Lord, and the entire family to yours. Love y'all. God bless y'all. And we will see you soon. Lord, watch over you and keep you. In Jesus' name we pray. Before I go, I do got to cast a net. I almost forgot. I'm looking at a beautiful pond right here in front of me. Got to cast the net. There's somebody who's watching and viewing today that you do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is your opportunity. You do not have to be in the building to be saved. You do not have to get to the pastor to be introduced to Jesus Christ. You have somebody sitting right with you right now who can lead you to Jesus. And all they have to do is ask you a simple question and have you to repeat after them so that you can profess Jesus as Lord and say it out your mouth. I believe Jesus is Lord. That's the first thing. You've got to believe the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that he is not just Savior, but he's Lord. That when he commands and in, 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 in his awesomeness or in his total strength and power that we completely surrender and submit to him and, and acquiesce to his 
just like the, the wise men came in and worshiped because they recognized his worthiness. His lordship. Do I identify? Do I am I willing to believe his lordship? That's the first thing. And then the second thing, you got to be willing to believe that he died for you. You got to be willing to believe that Christ died the death you should have died. You and I were supposed to receive that wrath that God had for the world. But he sent his son, the salvific person purpose uh, was even in in rotation ever since the, the fall of man in the garden of eden with adam and eve ever since then god had the plan already in store for us by sending his son the christ child to be the substitutionary sacrifice the sacrificial lamb for us all to die for us do you believe he died for you he died for our sins he died for us he died not only did he die not only is our lord but he is risen from the grave that's the last third final thing that you ought to believe are you willing to believe that he is risen from the grave that he is alive we don't wait to easter just to recognize that jesus is no longer in the tomb we celebrate that each and every day as a matter of fact there would be no calvary if there wasn't christmas so we thank god for sending baby jesus so that we can have calvary thank you lord for dying for us but not only only dying but being risen for, for us from the grave he is risen he didn't just get up out of the grave and just say hey y'all I'm back no he came back with all power and he's seated at the right hand of the father interceding for us even right now do you believe or are you willing to believe the lordship of Jesus are you willing to believe that he died for you are you willing to believe that he is risen and he has all power you believe those three things let us know who you are type it in the post the comment section call the church 703-893-8982 or visit our website at shilohbcva.net shilohbcva.net forward slash v member and fill out the form let us know who you are i want to receive jesus as a part of my sins i want to rededicate my life i felt the lord speaking to me today and helped me learn how i'm wise too and, and, and I just want to reconnect with a church so that I can have a church family, a place where I can grow and have a covering even in my life and have individuals that I can walk this journey with together and be disciple and then learn how to disciple others. If that's you, just let us know who you are so we can love on you today. Again, Shallow Nation, God bless you. Thank you all for hanging out and thank you for just being patient with all of what we're trying to do and keeping our service going on Sunday mornings. To all of our guests and our visitors, I pray you come again. Don't talk bad about us. We're in an interesting season and everybody is on the same playing field everybody has been equalized god has brought us all to utilizing some type of technology to get the word out and so don't talk bad about us because we're not the only one who are trying to get it right praise the lord <laughs> but we thank you for coming and sharing hope you come again and bring a friend love you all god bless you we'll see you soon prayerfully on watch night that will be probably the next service yes watch night to god be the glory bring it in the new year take care enjoy the rest of the day love y'all god bless god bless